Howard County since 1797. So I'm the sixth generation and Nora is the seventh generation of Clark's farming here in Howard County. And uh, most of what we did, my, my, all of my great grand grandfather, great grandfather, and great great grandfather raised beef. And so there have always been beef cattle on this farm. We're raising 100% grass fed beef. But this farm, um, has been in the family since the 1930s and uh, my grandfather bought it uh, to uh, raise cattle here and when my father came back from World War II he took it over and had a dairy operation here and raised beef cattle and uh, pigs and chickens and uh, we've always had a roadside vegetable stand. Um, we've done that for at least 30 years and uh, Nora does that now and then in 2002 we opened up the petting farms. The farm was purchased in 1948. My parents and I and my two older, older brothers moved here. Uh, it was a dairy farm and ultimately milking 120 Holsteins twice a day until 1972 when my father sold the cattle and retired from the dairy business. I actually started my side of the farming enterprise probably about 1975. And the cattle were gone, it was just being crop farmed, and I gradually took over the crop farming, growing hay. My oldest son, Sean, started showing in 4-H, showing beef cattle. And it's been an evolution since 1975. Ultimately, Sean, Jason, and subsequently Josh all showed beef cattle in 4-H and showed pigs in 4-H. So I guess it seemed natural that he got interested in growing beef and selling beef. People would be like, oh, you live on a farm, bring me a steak. Um, it was just something that we didn't do in the past, but I kept getting asked and kept getting asked and kept getting asked and had some conversations with uh, Kathy Zimmerman, and Zimmerman at the Economic Development Office and uh, decided one year that we would try the farmer's market and that we would retail individual cuts of meat rather than you know, a half of a steer or something like that. produce. We um, grow and sell a lot of summer vegetables. We do uh, a lot of varieties of tomatoes, regular tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, green peppers, hot peppers, sweet peppers, lots of squash, zucchini, summer squash, patty pan squash, and okra, uh, blackberries and raspberries, and sweet corn. Really, it's economics of making a living farming. We all have off-farm jobs. The only way that we've been able to preserve the farm and keep doing the things we're doing is because we all work somewhere else. We have, we're raising 100% grass-fed beef, and that's available at our at the petting farm. And the other business we have is the petting farm, Clark Selly Oak Farm, and. Um, that's a petting farm, we do educational tours, uh, birthday parties, we have a pumpkin patch, and we're open to the public six days a week. Um, being able to have the opportunity to meet a lot of the local uh, community that has come out to support the local farmers markets, but then has uh, given us a chance and tried our, our locally grown beef. Um, it's been pretty neat to have the opportunity to see the reaction of everyone who is used to buying store-bought beef versus now getting into buying our beef and seeing the tremendous difference. A lot of our business has come from referrals from the local community, um, a lot through a lot of our friends and family, um, and it's, it's been really neat to see how the, you know, uh, the, the local community has supported the uh, local raising of our beef. But the, the exciting part is that um, we have um, all the consumers right around us. So the whole opportunity to sell our produce to directly to the consumer um, is you know, something that a lot of people aren't able to do because they're far away from their markets. And so it's very exciting for us. The 
most important reasons to buy local is your carbon footprint, your health, and the economic benefits to the community. By purchasing local, your food is not traveling the 1,800 miles that food on average travels before it reaches the grocery store. For a small farm, we're not putting out tons and tons and tons of material, which is another good thing. We're not a giant factory farm that is dealing in such massive quantities. There's no reasonable way to locally deal with it. All our stuff is dealt with here locally. It doesn't run into the bay. It doesn't go anywhere else. It maintains its nutrient and mineral values. It's healthier for you. It's fresher tasting, and it is so good. We produce a safe and local, fresh, uh, nutritious food, and I think that is appreciated. We also um, show that you can be a farm, a small family farm, and make a living and keep your land. So you're not only helping the economy and your health, but you're helping the environment because your food's not traveling as far, you know the farmers that you're buying it from, and you can eat that fresh food every day. You know, all my beef, I take 40, 50 animals to the, the local butcher right down the road who employs 30 or 50 people. We buy our feed from a local feed store. We reach out to the local economy in a lot of ways, and we supply to the restaurants, obviously, and you know, it's a trickle-down effect and you know, spread, spread things around pretty significantly. Eating fruits and vegetables is healthy, as we all know. Um, it, fruits and vegetables provide more fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and those are things that help our body function optimally, um, help us prevent, help prevent uh, chronic diseases such as osteoporosis, heart disease, even kidney disease and cancer, and also help uh, prevent infections. And those of us who eat more fruits and vegetables have healthier body weights um, and, and generally feel better. But beyond that, eating local fruits and vegetables um, offers optimal nutrition. That's because when you eat a fruit or a vegetable or produce that is grown locally, you are eating a product that has been ripened to its fullness. When a fruit or a vegetable is allowed to ripen to its fullness, it can develop all those nutrients completely. Um, whereas when a farm that needs to pick the produce early so that it's transported for two weeks. It needs to pick those, that produce before it's prime and those nutrients have not yet fully developed. Yeah, and that's one of the huge benefits to working local for us. Uh, you're working with an ingredient literally hours, sometimes even minutes after it's been, uh, after it's been harvested rather than weeks um, in most cases when it comes across the country. So. Additionally, um, when a produce is transported uh, 1,000, 2,000 miles, it loses the nutrients that it has because of time and also because of temperature um, variations during the transport. People are very, very interested in having meat or any type of farm product where they know where it came from, they know that it doesn't have antibiotics and steroids and hormones and is incredibly mass produced. Um, they like to know that they can come out here, you know, they like to look at pictures of the farm and that and, and know where it comes from and it excites people. And, you know, the quality is, according to everybody that buys from us, is head and shoulders above anything you can get out of the grocery store as far as meats go. And I put that to the test any day of the week. I eat a Beast Strong wine bar is about 10 years old. We've been in business now and with the theme of trying to keep things local and fresh and seasonal, and so our menu changes on a regular basis. We source and work with local farmers and have been for about the last eight years. Um, one of the requirements that the chef and I have is that when we work with a large producer, we ask them to provide us with local options, and they help solve a problem that we have to, we have to deal with every day, which is how to get source and get local items here from the farm. Uh, what we have here is an example of some of the dishes that we'll make from local produce. Uh, we have a uh, fairly simple uh, pasta primavera. It's made with a fresh basil pesto and uh, some tomatoes, squash, and zucchini. This is a, a great example of what we'll be doing pretty much all summer and how we'll present our foods. Um, the great thing about this dish is, uh, as, as you know, it, literally was just picked today. Here we have an example of uh, a chilled dish. Um, this is a dish consisting of all local items, uh, items that do uh, grow around here. And uh, we have uh, a little bit of crab, 
wrapped in a cucumber, little onion and cucumber garnish, and some fresh peach puree. Again, we have a, uh, a fun dish. It's chilled, it's summery, and it's all local. This is our Wickham Farms hamburger. We've been using Wickham Farms ground beef for quite some time now. And our lamb and pork products when it's available, and sometimes our honey. Uh, we like to use local products only because the origin. We like to know where it's from, and we like to help out local farmers also. And my background is from farming, so we were kind of a private farmer, not a corporate farmer. And we always try to help out those in the same scenario. Uh, and we chose Wickham Farms because A, it's right around the corner, and B, the flavor of the beef is phenomenal. Um, they, a bunch of farmers came to us for a meeting uh, for other chefs to meet, and they all sold proteins like buffalo, bison, pork, lamb, all of the above. But they didn't have a whole lot of cuts, and all the cuts they had were always sold out. They couldn't keep up with the amount of restaurants, but everybody had the same problem, too much ground meat. So I figured I'll give them a shot, and I'll, I'll help them out. Uh, and Wickham Farms, again, was right on the corner, and Jason, uh, has agreed to help me out with it. And he's, he stops by once, twice a week with 20, 40 pounds of beef, lamb, pork, whatever we ask for. And it's phenomenal. And uh, we sell our hamburger here for $14. And we can't keep on top of it. It sells out all the time. It's, it's great.